Hello and welcome to Reality Check. I'm Seb, I'm filling in for Cameron this week, so apologies if the science is a little shaky. Now, could we ever fully control the actions of a dog? In Call of Duty Ghost, you have a little pup by the name of Riley as part of your team, and through a handy LCD panel, he can be guided around the battlefield. But is this really possible? And could we ever really have remote-controlled dogs? So this is Riley the Wonder Dog, a vital member of your team who's more than happy to leap through a window and tackle three dudes through a solid wooden door at the same time. Presumably the treats he gets as a reward for this behaviour must be really, really good. But will we ever be able to send a dog off on their own to complete very delicate and even dangerous objectives? It turns out that this idea isn't as far-fetched as you might think. Scientists at Alabama's Auburn University have been working on a control system to guide dogs, enabling them to follow commands even when a human handler isn't beside them or even within earshot. The control system consists of a microprocessor, wireless radio, GPS receiver and a heading reference system. These are all fitted to a kind of vest which is strapped to the dog. Now, while the system allows people to monitor what the dog is doing, it's not like a one-size-fits-all suit you can just strap to any dog, making it fully controllable. Because the commands given to the dogs via the vest are a series of vibrations and audio cues, the dogs have to be trained beforehand to respond to these signals. Now, that may sound like a lot of effort, but the scientists at Auburn University have concluded that it's very much worthwhile, with an obedience accuracy rate of nearly 87%. Now that's quite impressive when you consider that's a vest made up of little more than tunes and good vibes and we can only assume then that the other 13% of the time is spent pissing on bombs and leg humping targets. However, training dogs to respond to external stimuli isn't necessarily the only way to turn it into a remote controlled war machine. It could also, in theory, be done by plugging directly into the brain. Dr. John Chapin, a scientist at New York State University, has been researching the makeup of rat brains for years, leading to a remarkable project known as the RoboRat. Using wireless technology, he's able to send signals to the parts of the brain that correspond to the whiskers of the rat. By stimulating the right whiskers, they make the rat turn right, and by stimulating the left whiskers, the rat turns left. They can also send a little jolt to the pleasure center of the brain to reward the rat for doing a good job. Jolt to the pleasure center. Now, if that's not technology worth investigating, we have failed science. Currently, that technology exists solely within rats, but could it be used on dogs to control them around the battlefield? Science says maybe. So given war is still fought for the most part using the traditional people method, why exactly are these technologies being developed? Well, trained dogs are already vital in dangerous situations. Most significantly in finding survivors in disaster zones, hunting down drugs and even sniffing out explosives. Sometimes they're required to perform these tasks in areas where the human handlers either can't be heard or are too big to accompany them. So while remote control dogs on the battlefield are technically possible, could we ever see one used as tactically as Riley from Call of Duty Ghosts? The main obstacle isn't necessarily getting the dog to respond to commands. It's more about getting them to understand the intentions. In the game, one of the ghosts tells Riley to help lure a soldier in. He dutifully barks, leading the soldier closer to the team where he's then ambushed. While a real-life dog could be trained to bark on command, it wouldn't understand why, i.e. that a trap is being set for an enemy soldier. This is partly to do with the fact that dogs exclusively speak dog. So commanding man's best friend is possible, though limited to what the dog has been trained to do. You could teach it to bark on command when it hears distract the guard, but less out of duty to its country and more out of duty to treats and good dog belly rubs. We may never see a dog as good at war as Riley, but the idea of a remote-controlled canine isn't as out there as you might think.
Now, again, apologies for your missing host. He will return next week. Why don't you let him know how his stand-in managed by tweeting him at CamFresRob, or you can let me know all the science that I missed at ReadySebiGo. And if you'd like to learn more about the possibility of four-legged warhounds, check out our previous episode where Cam investigates this mechanized walking fear engine by Boston Dynamics. It slips on ice like it thinks it's animals. Our future is bleak and terrifying. We'll see you next time.